like fire lighters and uh, Kiwana too. What I may even do is transfer that down to the fire actually towards the avenue. Yep, we've got an hour outside of the avenue. Righty-o legends, here we are. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Tony, this is Sam, this is the Mighty Jimny and we're out camping again here in Western Australia. We've come down to Dwelling Up. The rain's starting to pour down so we're going to get this campfire and uh, this campsite set up as quick as possible. We'll uh, join you in a minute once everything's set up and we'll uh, talk about what's happening on this episode. Cheers, go grab a beer, we'll do the hard work. <laughs> She's chucking it down now. We're just trying to get this campsite uh, set up. Sam's putting the sidewall for the Rhino Rack sidewall over there. Now this is actually the same campsite that I uh, started the Mighty Jimny uh, YouTube channel with. Um, but last time I came down here it was uh, it was summer and it was nice and dry. But I'll, uh, once this rain uh, disappears, I'll take you down to the, uh, to the river and you can see the difference from the first video that I've done uh, you know, six months ago now, to uh, what the Murray River looks like with this amount of uh, this amount of rain. Um, yeah, it's really nice and swollen, and it's it's that area that used to be nice and dry and a bit of a landing point down the end there is yeah, that's uh, that's full on. We've we've swapped the Akubras for beanies at the moment, but uh, yeah, we're going to get this campfire uh, going in a minute. Um, we're just going to have to probably dig a couple of trenches to funnel some water away from it and get it nice and uh, nice and sheltered. But apart from that, um, there's no major wind or anything like that. We're just pegging down just in case. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go from there. All right, so uh, stay tuned and uh, we'll get back to you once uh, the campsite's uh, relatively well set up. And Sam is going to give you a tour. So uh, what do you reckon, buddy? Yeah, it's hectic. Should be right. Camping in the rain isn't always, isn't the best, but it's still pretty funny at the same time. It is hilarious. See, Sam isn't a huge fan of uh, camping in the rain. Me, personally, I love it. I reckon it's great. Cold, wet nights around a nice, dry, warm fire. Uh, I'm gonna cook a really nice, um, really nice meal for us. And uh, we're gonna probably punch uh, quite a few sherbets into our head to keep ourselves warm. And she'll be all right. All right, crack on. I started getting this campsite really starting to, to look quite good now. Um, you can see I've got the old RS1 set up, or well, new RS1 for me. Um, let's go have a quick squiz at what Sam's doing over the other side.
What do you got for me? Hey, oh, I've got the, uh, I'm trying trying to set up the Darchi Dust to Dawn 1100, which yeah, yeah. so far I'm pretty happy with. I've been camping for the last two nights in it, and uh, other than uh, on the first day as I was driving, I obviously didn't pack it up properly and one end of it got wet, but other than that, even while it's been raining at night, it still has kept me completely dry. Yeah, it's so, standing. Out of the two swags that I've had, uh, the other one I've got is a, is a Wanderer single swag. This is definitely one that I'd recommend if anyone's looking at buying a, a double swag for yourselves. Fantastic. Oh well, keep setting it up big boy. And very soon we'll be uh, enjoying ourselves by a raging fire. Wave to the camera. <laughs> Alright, so yep, cracking on. Um, this isn't too bad. Now you can see under here, with the rhino rack, batwing awning, the side wall, the RS1 all linked up, we have got oodles, absolutely oodles of shelter. So one thing we just have to be careful of is that uh, we're getting a few pockets of water here, so we're gonna have to push some of that out before it gets too bad. But apart from that, we are killing it. So we'll set the rest up and we'll get back to you soon. So how's it going? Um, we've mostly got the campsite set up. We've got a fire going. We've um, tried a couple of different tricks like fire lighters and uh, grass trees. They seem to burn uh, pretty good, so we're gonna try that out. Uh, if you have a look, we've got uh, Anthony's Oz 10 RS1 set up. We've got it uh, stuck to the to the batwing awning just using carabiners, which is wicked. Um, the side awning down on the side with my little swag underneath it with a dry um, uh, <coughs> uh, tarp underneath it and all that sort of stuff. Uh, plenty of shelter, so we're laughing, we're killing it. Uh, looks pretty good, like everyone's pretty happy with it. Both of the Jimneys out, they made it out here easy enough. And it's a wicked little spot, it's awesome. We've got heaps of grass trees left over to keep this fire going once we get it. Hopefully we can get a nice little ash bed going, throw it in, use the camp oven, hopefully. If not, maybe we'll make like a spag bowl instead or something. But otherwise, everything's, we're laughing, everything's happy. That's good. Righto, g'day legends. So uh, we've been, we've got a good fire going, but it's not quite enough for us to uh, get the Dutch oven going. So as a plan B, um, originally what I was going to do is get the Dutch oven going and have a one pot chicken uh, stew casserole kind of situation. However, that's uh, not really an option um, at the moment. Just if we had have got down here a little bit earlier, maybe uh, we would have been able to get those, uh, those coals going. But for now, what I'm going to do is a camp style spaghetti bolognese almost bachelor chow kind of kind of thing and uh basically um just smash through and get a bit of pasta going bit of uh bit of bolognese sauce and everything like that now this is exactly how my mum taught me to um cook spaghetti bolognese and my recommendation is to all parents out there is to teach your kid how to cook spaghetti bolognese because if all else fails they can feed themselves all right so what i'm going to do here Number one um, is I've got a cook cam down here, which is quite cool. Um, and number one, what I'm going to do is get uh, my onion, and I'm also going to get some garlic. Now, um, when I go out camping and stuff like that, I'm not going to take, you know, garlic with me in like garlic cloves and stuff like that. It's much easier just to grab a, a little jar of uh, of garlic there, and you can do that. Now, the very very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dice my um, onions up. The onion, um, because it's camp style, look, um, I'm not, uh, what's a famous cook, Sam? Um, Jamie Oliver. Jamie Oliver, I'm not Jamie Oliver, alright, so when it comes down to knife work and stuff like that and all of those kinds of things, um, the, uh, look, this is going to be pretty chunky, like, uh, like Mama likes it. Alright, so uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to chop this bad boy up and uh, get it relatively well uh, diced. Now look with this um, this kind of thing. Look, this is probably a, a throw that in the fire. Um, this is probably a, a recipe for about four five people. Um, however, what I can do is I'm just going to down downsize it a little bit um, and just kind of cook half of that because it's just me and Sam and um, we're only little fellas, so we're going to do that. All right. So basically, all I'm going to do is just just chop that up. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right. One of the main things that you want to do is just make it enough so when you put it on these butane stoves that they're not going to, uh, um, the butane stove's not going to have to work too hard to get it going. Alright, which reminds me, what I'll do is I'll get that, I'll get that going. 
There it is. Whoopla. And a little bit of oil in there as well. So it doesn't need heaps and heaps. All right, what you need is enough in there to um, to be able to saute your onions. Now with your onions, um, this is a fairly kind of standard thing with onions. What you want to do is um, cook them up so they are starting to go translucent. All right, make sure that is all good. All right, and I'm going to throw that in. Oh, sizzling away already. It doesn't take long for these butane stoves to start to uh, start cooking up. All right, grab my um, my mince. Uh, sorry, my uh, minced garlic, and I'm just going to grab just a, a little blob about yay big on the end of the knife. Throw that in there. All right, so that's starting to. Uh, to go already which is really nice that's quite hot so I'm just going to turn that down a touch all right now I've got some 500 gram of good old Aussie beef mince here um, I'm only going to use about half of that watch the hands make sure you wash your hands prior I promise I did all right I'm going to throw that in there. So my onions are nice and clear, uh, translucent now, and I'm just going to get that uh, that mince going. And what I'm going to do with that mince is I'm going to that'll do. Sam's going to throw that back in the fridge for us, for the legend. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that mince going and get it so it's nice and brown. Now, one thing I like to do when it comes to cooking things like mince and all that kind of stuff is I like to throw a little dash of herbs and stuff in there at this point now. So, if all goes pear-shaped, you've got at least a little bit of cooked herb mince to eat. <laughs> and uh, so that's just cooking away there. I'm gonna leave that for a second. All right. And I'm going to grab some carrots, okay? And I'm just gonna lop the ends off those carrots and then kind of dice one carrot up Relatively, there you go. Um, relatively kind of chunky. As much as I can do it. My, my knife, I keep my knives pretty sharp, so they're, they're not too bad. It's probably G for a sharpening. Thing is, I use my camp knife for everything, from from shaving wood and carving to cooking. So as long as you clean it in between, you're, you're usually pretty good. All right, so that's all good there. We've got one carrot, all right, and that's just going to sit there for a second. And then I'm also going to grab a, I'm also going to grab a uh, spring onion. I'm just going to lop the end of the spring onion off. Look at that off. Get rid of that. Lock that end off. That can go. Happy days. All right, and uh, then what I'm going to do is just dice that up as well, relatively. Uh, relatively well. What this does is just adds a bit of flavour, a bit of onion flavour in there, a bit of spring onion, which is not super, super overpowering. And once it, uh, once it cooks for a while, it's pretty good. Now, as for pasta, look, I, my favourite pasta um, is large spiral pasta. The thing with large spiral pasta is that it picks up the sauce really well, um, and it's also fairly easy to cook when you're uh, out on the trail with the chimney. Um, look at that, that's a, an amazing fire you got going there, buddy. Thank you. Um, and, all right, so this stage, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna throw one can of the uh, diced tomatoes. Now with the diced tomatoes, you can get them in a whole range of different ones. I like to get the one with a bit of basil and garlic in there. Um, this adds to a little bit of extra flavor, because flavor is the best. And just throw that in there and just stir that through. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm actually going to be starting the actual sauce itself. Um, now, oh, look at that. That's lovely. A little bit of tomato paste. That just helps richen the sauce up a little bit. Um, we're not going to... Now, normally if I'm cooking like the, the proper full-size meal version of this, um, I'll use a whole one of these packets of uh, tomato uh, paste there. But I'm not going to do that today purely because... Um, it's only for Samwise Gamgee and myself, and um, hopefully, 
it will actually turn out just like I planned. All right, so I'm going to let that um, stew away for a while, um, and then I will be back to boil up the pasta and then uh, serve it up. So that's pretty much it, to be honest. It's, it's a really quick, easy camp style bolognese. Right. So that's been um, going now for about uh, 15, 20 minutes. And what I'm going to do is get the pasta going. So with the pasta, I'm just using the old, uh, the old uh, San Remo large spiral. Um, with your water, what you want to do is throw a dash of oil in there that helps lubricate your pasta up a little bit as it uh, as it boils and it stops it all from sticking together. Um, so sorry for the smoke. The uh, we've got a little bit of rain coming through and it's making the uh, the campfire all smoky, but she'll be right. All right, so this is boiling up, and um, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put enough for us in there. Not bad, huh? Camp style bolognese, ready to rumble. What do you reckon, bud? Yeah, I'm stoked. Delicious. <laughs> so, hopefully, mm. even if I do say so myself, <laughs> and uh, this bread I picked up from uh, <coughs> uh, from Malibu Fresh Essentials. Down Safety Bay Row there. I've never seen it, but yeah. yeah looks... Really, really. They got like a little bakery bit and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so they do really well. Oh uh, well, look, we're gonna uh, we're gonna have a quick feed, mm. and then we've just had a little bit of a uh, little bit of a downpour that seems to have buggered off. So with any luck, we'll be able to uh, get in and answer some of these good yeah, folks Q some, uh, Q &A, some yeah some questions and have a bit of a laugh and uh, see how we go. But uh, look. There's a, uh, a pretty quick and simple camp style spaghetti bowl that you can uh, smash together yourself next time you're out in the uh, out in the trails and yeah there you go bon appetit nice enjoy. <laughs>